welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam. If you're not new here, thanks for sticking around. In today's episode of filming a video the day before I need to have it up and being completely chaotic, we're doing books that ruined my life because, you know, why not? Why not share the chaos with y'all? Why not share some of the books that will explain why I am the way that I am? They might even explain some of my bookish opinions. <laughs> And me as a reader in general, honestly, like I feel like this says a lot about me. So I do have six books to talk about. I don't own two of them because they ruined my life enough to be unhauled. I also do want to preface this by saying not every single book is going to be like a negative thing. So like if you're not up for a depression fest, this is not going to be a completely negative video. I promise some of these books ruined my life in like the best way but they still ruined my life so we're gonna talk about it all but before we jump into the books if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon will notify you when I post currently I am posting on Sundays and Wednesdays and also the little like button just makes me feel like I'm doing something good maybe all right let's jump into the six books that ruined my life all right so we're gonna start off strong with the number one book that ruined my life this book I, I, I can't even say anything else about it other than it completely destroyed me as a person, as a reader. I did not pick up another book for probably close to a year after this book. This book is the reason why I read the last page of books before I read the book. This book is the reason why I am terrified to start new books. Um, this is the definition of a book that ruined my life and that is The Fall in Our Stars by John Green. We all know this book. Everybody knows this book. I don't need to talk about this book, but this book, I have always said that there was a pre Fault in Our Stars Sam and a post Fault in Our Stars Sam. I was a different person and a different reader. Like those are my two periods of life really. Pre Fault in Our Stars Sam actually liked tragic endings. I loved Wuthering Heights. I loved Nicholas Sparks. I mean, the, A Walk to Remember was like, my thing. I have seen that movie probably 45,000 times. Like I could quote that movie at one point. I could probably literally just watch it in my head. It was one of my favorite movies of all time and I have never seen it since. <laughs> I read The Fault in Our Stars. Um, The Fault in Our Stars was unexpected. I did not go into it knowing how it was going to end and I had never read a young adult book that had ended tragically really before so I didn't really know I was I was 14 when I read it and I guess I hadn't really thought about it being possible for it to be a true tragic ending um and it destroyed me and and post Fall in Our Stars Sam took a very long time to get back into reading um is very nervous about reading has a tendency to read the last page of books before reading the book and is very nervous about romance in general um, this is why I won't read any Colleen Hoover books. I don't trust her. Book number two is Beautiful Chaos. This is by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll and this is the third book in the Beautiful Creature series which I adore. Like this is kind of like, I don't want to say it's a positive thing but it's not really a negative thing either. Like I do not hate this book. I love this book. I love this series but this book destroyed me. <laughs> this is the only book in my entire life that I have actually shed real tears about. Like the only one ever ever and I am not a crier at all and if this was the last book in the series I would hate it I would never pick it up ever again and it would be another Fall in Our Stars episode but it's not there is a book four and it's fine but this book this book hurt me in ways that I can't even describe <laughs> so this next book might be cheating because I've never read it and if you think it's cheating that's fine but this is Allegiant and let me explain why this book ruined my life even though I have never read it. So I absolutely adored Divergent. I was completely absorbed into the post Hunger Games dystopian world that popped up and I read everything and I loved this series. I probably read the first two books like six or seven times in one year just waiting for this book to come out. I pre-ordered it. It was the first book that I had ever pre-ordered. I was ready. And then a friend happened to read it just before I did. She read it. She binge read it in one day, like the day before my book came because she went to the store to get it and I was getting it in the mail. And she told me, Sam, you are not going to want to read this book. 
and I wanted to know why and I let her spoil it for me and now I will never read the book and I still own the book purely out of anger that I pre-ordered it and have never read it like honestly I'm just angry about it this is the reason that I am so afraid to start series that aren't finished yet um this is the reason that I no longer trust this author, Veronica Roth. I've never read anything else by her. Um, this is the reason that, honestly, this, this is the book that is the reason why I spent years not reading series unless they were finished. And now I do tend to read series that aren't finished, but I always go into it very nervous. And if I get even a hint that it might turn out like this, chances are I'm going to DNF the series. The next book that absolutely ruined my life is The Summer I Turned Pretty. So this book is super super popular right now because it just became a TV show. And don't get me wrong, I love this book but I also hate this book. <laughs> this book is why I struggle with love triangles. Um, you know, we've all been through the Twilight phase, we've all, we all know the love triangle there, like the original love triangle. I, I, and honestly we can talk about Twilight too because the first time I read Twilight I was Team Jacob. I have since changed my mind. However, this book, I, I, I don't know. I can't pick. I never could pick. I mean, I kind of picked and then I picked wrong <laughs> and then I was kind of mad about it. And then the more I thought about it, the more angry I got and the more I just didn't want to read love triangles anymore. This book is the main reason that I don't read love triangles like hardly ever anymore. Um, but also, I am kind of curious if I were to read it now, if I would still pick the same boy that I chose the first time I read it. I have a feeling I would because I think that's my taste, you know? And I don't really know how to explain that without spoiling things and I'm not going to do that. So I have a feeling I would probably pick the same boy, which is why I probably will not read it again because I don't need to go through that again. I just, I don't. The next book I also do not own and have never owned. Um, I read this on my sister's Kindle, I think. Maybe it was on my Nook. I'm really not sure. I I read this back in high school, post Fault in Our Stars. I read a romance. I did not read the last page. I was ready to get back into reading. I was ready to not be afraid of romance anymore. Um, and I was very very wrong. So this book is Johnny the Girl and I had to do some deep internet searching to find this book because I kept spelling Johnny wrong. Um, but it's fine. I don't know who this book is by and it sounded good. I promise it did. I was in my fan fiction era when I read this book so it sounded like fan fiction but like not. Like basically it's about this girl who is in college and she is gonna be roommates with five guys. Um, and obviously there's some romance from there. So like it sounds like it should be fan fiction, but it's not. But it also kind of reads like fan fiction. And I adored it. I loved it. It was great. Until it wasn't. The ending of that book wrecked me in ways that I can't even comprehend. Ways that I have still not recovered from because it came out of nowhere. I just, I was so sure that we were gonna have a happy ending and then we didn't and I just I felt so defeated honestly and it set me so far back in the progress I had made since The Fault in Our Stars. I was probably like almost 18 when I read it so it had been four years since The Fault in Our Stars and it just set me back four years prior. And the last book that ruined my life, kind of ruined my life in the best way, but also like it still ruined my life. And that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. This book ruined my life because it changed the game for me. Like it changed fantasy for me. It changed fantasy romance for me. It really introduced me to true fantasy romance. Before this book, I was satisfied with fantasy with a romance subplot. After this book, no more. No. Mm -mm. I need heavy romance in my fantasy. This is the book that I will compare every fantasy romance book I read to. Like it, when I first read it, I was like, this is like top tier book to me. Like this is my taste. And I know a lot of people say it's not top tier writing. That's fine. Again, we've already talked about how writing 
style writing ability really matters very little to me. This was top tier for my taste. Like it hit everything that I love in a book. Everything. And it did it so well <laughs> that I will forever compare every fantasy romance that I read to this book. And this was five stars to me. And I have since rated a, a good majority of fantasy books that I read four stars because they don't meet this level. And it makes me a little bit sad because books that I used to love, they just don't feel the same anymore. Now I know some of y'all are gonna ask since I did put one of my favorite books on this list, why didn't I put Outlander on this list? Outlander did not ruin my life. It changed my life for sure. Absolutely. It is my favorite book I have ever read. But it didn't really ruin reading for me in any way. Like this book put me in a huge reading slump because I couldn't find anything else that really was like this. Like somebody suggested that I read The Cruel Prince after this and they were like, oh, it's just like Akatar. No, it's not. Like not even remotely. It, it is not. It actually made me kind of hate The Cruel Prince the first time I read it because I was just like, this is nothing like what I was promised. Outlander didn't do that. I don't compare things to Outlander because you really can't compare things to Outlander. There isn't anything like Outlander. Like it's, it's really hard to even put it in a genre. Like I know it's kind of like historical fiction. Some people like to call it fantasy. I don't really see it as fantasy. So I just don't compare things to it because there's nothing like it. It, if you want to say that it changed anything or ruined anything, I don't like to read anything else that's set in Scotland. So I guess you could say that maybe a little bit of ruining happened there. I don't really want to read about that setting in another story. It's not to say that I never will, but I don't really want to right now. But I don't, like, it didn't stop me from reading other things. It didn't stop me from enjoying other things. It just gave me a favorite book to have. So that's why that's not on this list. But those are seven books that ruined my life. And now, honestly, they've got me angry all over again. <laughs> So thanks for watching. I will see y'all in the next video. Have a great week. Bye for now.